Separation of variables is a very powerful technique for finding solutions to partial differential equations. It doesn't always work, but when it does, you're golden. It's really the physicist's first line of attack for a partial differential equation. I'll introduce separation of variables with a simple example that comes up a lot. It's called Laplace's equation. The equation is the second partial derivative with respect to x plus the second partial derivative with respect to y plus vanish. I'm calling the function we're talking about capital T because I'm going to think about it as a temperature. But Laplace's equation describes many things besides temperatures. So you're trying to solve this equation. It may not give you the solution you're looking for, but separation of variables can often give you a lot of solutions that will be used to build up the solution you're looking for. So here's how you do it. You look for solutions that take a very special form. These solutions aren't just any function of f and y. They are a product of some function of just x, call it capital X of little x, and some function of y, call it capital Y and little y. So in separation of variables, you looked for product solutions. You make this on sides. Let's plug that in. We'll find that the second derivative with respect to x squared of capital X times capital Y plus the second derivative with respect to Y of capital X times capital Y is equal to zero. And now we notice that because the partial derivative with respect to x keeps y fixed, this capital Y of y is, may as well be a constant as far as the derivative is concerned, and we can bring it out. So we can write capital Y of y times the second x derivative of x of x. But now we can just write it as double prime. Because although it was a partial derivative, now it's acting on something that's just a function of x. So we'll just call it x double prime. And similarly over here, we're taking a y derivative. So the x of x is constant, can be brought out in front of the integral. So we get x of x times y double prime of y equals 0. So we've gotten rid of the partial derivatives in favor of ordinary derivatives, but it's still mixed up. There's x dependence and y dependence all over the place. It's not really an ordinary differential equation yet. So here's the key idea of separation of variables. We want to play around with this until it looks like stuff just involving y equals stuff just involving x. We want to separate the variables on each side of the equation. So to do that here, what we do is we multiply by, divide by capital X of little x times capital Y of little y. And we need to do that on both sides, or to all terms of the equation. And look what happens. Here we have a capital Y of y canceling, and so we're just left with stuff involving x. And over here, we have capital X canceling, and we're just left with stuff involving Y. So, if we keep going, we can write this as the following equation. X double prime of little x over capital X of x is equal to minus Y double prime of y over capital Y of y. So now we've succeeded. If your equation that you started with can be put in this form where the two members of the product solution appear on separate sides of the equation, you say the equation is separable and the method is working. So Laplace's equation is separable. Now, this is the most important part to understand about the method. 
The left-hand side depends only on x, okay? And the right-hand side depends only on y. Now, if we imagine changing y a little bit, the right-hand side can change because it depends on y, but the left-hand side doesn't. But these are equal. So that means the right-hand side doesn't change either. So it's actually not dependent on y. The right-hand side is a constant. And then, of course, the same is true from the left-hand side because they're equal. And we can run the same argument starting from the left-hand side. Let's imagine we changed x a little bit. Well, the left-hand side might change, but the right-hand side can't change. It doesn't depend on x. So this is really constant. But that means the left-hand side doesn't depend on x either. It's a constant. Okay, so you, you make this argument on both sides, and you find that neither side can actually depend on the thing it depends on. And so that means that both sides of the equation must be equal to some constant, which of course has to be the same constant because they're equal. And then you just give it a, a name. Now, if you know what physics problem you're solving, you might be able to pick a good name. I'm going to pick the name minus k squared for the constant, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so we separated variables, we made the key step of then setting both sides equal to a constant, and now we can split this into two equations. The first one says x double prime of x over capital X of x equals minus k squared, or multiplying through x double prime of x plus k squared x of x equals zero. That was the equation thing on the far left equals thing on the far right. But we also have the equation that the stuff involving y equals thing on the far right. And that equation is y double prime of y, and there's a sign change, minus k squared y of y equals 0. So look what happened. We started up here with 1 partial differential equation. There's partial derivatives and there's only one equation. And what we got after separating variables was two ordinary differential equations. Remember, ordinary means the equation involves just the derivative with respect to one variable. So the top equation involves just derivatives with respect to x, and the bottom equation involves just derivatives with respect to y. So separation of variables took one PDE, and made it to ODEs, and these are ODEs that are probably familiar to you. The top one says that if you take two derivatives of the function, it's proportional to minus the function, and so this one is sines and cosines. So the solution for x of x is a sine kx plus b cosine kx, where a and b are anything, we get two constants because it's a second order ordinary differential equation. And the one on the bottom is the same thing with the mind, a sine flip. This says if you take two derivatives, you get something proportional to the original function, and that's an exponential. So capital Y is C e to the ky plus d e to the minus ky. So now we found a bunch of solutions. The solutions we found take the form of a product of two functions, and the functions, x and y, have five free constants in them, a, b, c, d, and k. In the next video, I'll show you how to use these solutions to solve a physics problem by this method.